Hello and welcome. My name's Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. So this is one of my most requested videos. Today we're gonna tackle sublimation on cotton and dark colors. There are several products on the market and we are going to put to the test several of those. So we're going to test a couple different brands of Glitter HTV, a couple different brands of Flocked HTV, as well as several different products that all claim to allow you to sublimate on dark and cotton clothing. Now, I'm going to use my Epson EcoTank ET4700 that's been converted to sublimation for all of these tests. I'm using Hippo Sublimation Ink. So that is important because some of these products I have to change up the way I'm using them just a little bit in order to get them to work with the Epson printer. So your results could differ if you have a different sublimation printer or a different sublimation setup. But with my setup, let's take a look at how all of these products work and then which one works best. I'm gonna put them to the test by putting these on a black cotton shirt, seeing how they look, then running it through the laundry a bunch of times and see which one of these performs the best. So let's get started looking at each of the products in detail and how they work. All right, so here are the products we're gonna compare. So I have two brands of glitter HTV. I'm gonna sublimate on both those. I have two brands of flocked HTV, one here and then one here called Subly Flock. And with some of these, you might need a transfer tape that is heat resistant. So you might wanna have some of that on hand. I'm also gonna do a control sample just with sublimation. And I'm gonna do that on a polyester shirt that I'm not gonna put through the laundry. So it's gonna be our sample to compare how bright everything is and how much everything fades when I wash it. And then what we're gonna use is a black shirt for all of these products. And this shirt is 90% cotton, 10% polyester. Now we, I have Caesar Easy Subly, Subly Flex, Flexi Print, and Subly Mate. Those are the products, all the products we're gonna compare. So which one works best on a black cotton shirt and which holds up best when I run it through the laundry many, many times. So I'm gonna start by heading to my sublimation printer and doing a bunch of prints. And then I'm gonna talk about each of these and how you use them. And I'm gonna press them to a shirt and see how well they work first. And then we'll come back with periodic updates on how well the shirt is going after I start running it through the laundry cycle. Let's talk about the control sample first. So this is a 93% polyester shirt and I printed a heart that says sublimation across it, mirrored the design on sublimation paper. And I will link to a video below detailing what kind of sublimation printer I use, just in case you're curious. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna apply this to this shirt. This shirt, I'm not gonna wash. We are going to use it as a sample to compare everything else to as far as color, brightness, that type of thing. And I'm just gonna stick this in the middle of my shirt. I'm gonna use some heat resistant tape, tape this into place. And I'm gonna press this at 400 degrees for about 40 seconds. And I am gonna put protective paper on the top as well as inside the shirt and go ahead and press it. So I did get over to the press and I realized I did not pre-press my shirt. So I removed this, pre-pressed the shirt, re-lint rolled and added this back, then pressed it to my shirt and peeled it away. So you can see it says sublimation, the colors are bright and vibrant. And this is what we can use to compare everything else to as far as the look you're gonna get on the dark cotton shirt. So let's start with our first experiment and let's go ahead and start with the glitter HTV. First up is the Caesar Glitter HTV. So I took a heart and I mirrored it. The heart won't matter for the mirror, but if you're gonna do any other design, be sure to mirror. And I cut it out of HTV and we did like usual. And then I made a heart the same size with my sublimation design, 
printed it with a sublimation printer on sublimation paper and it will go over the top of the glitter heart. So the first thing we need to do is to press the glitter heart. So what I'm gonna do with this t-shirt to get all my experiments on it, I'm probably gonna cut it in half actually, but I'm gonna do like some experiments. I might be able to get them all on this. I'll do some experiments down this side and then some down the opposite side and hopefully get them all on the same shirt. So I may put this, the Caesar, maybe all the way in the bottom corner. Um, so I'm gonna press this. The temperature is 320 for the Caesar glitter and it says like 15 seconds. What I'm gonna try to do is just press it like five seconds, just enough to get this carrier sheet off. And then I'm gonna bump my press up to the 400 to press the sublimation design on top. So let's first press this glitter into place. I'm gonna pre-press the shirt first to remove any moisture, then add the glitter. So now this one's been pressed. Like I said, I just pressed it, I don't know, maybe eight, nine seconds. It's stuck enough that I can get this carrier sheet off. And then I think I might lint roll just to get anything off of there that shouldn't be on there. And then the hardest part of using the glitter under sublimation is locating your design. Simple designs work best, but it's definitely difficult to like get your everything in location. You can oversize your sublimation design because it's not gonna stick to this cotton shirt anyway. And even if it did the black, you wouldn't see it. So you could oversize your design a little bit. I'm just gonna kind of put it on there. And then I would use some heat resistant tape to hold that into place. And then I'm gonna bump my heat press up and do this at 400 for 60 seconds and then we'll take a look at the results. Okay, I pressed the Caesar glitter at 400. I ended up doing it for 50 seconds. It looks amazing. So here are the colors next to my sublimation design looks really really good right out of the press and the adhesive on the um, HTV was not affected by the higher heat like it's still perfect and ready to go so this one is done I'm gonna now I'm gonna try B flex glitter in the same way so don't worry this is a white glitter the carrier sheet is kind of blue and what I've done is the same thing I've done with the Caesar so I cut a heart and we did it and then I printed on my A sub paper, mirrored a heart that says B Flex Glitter. So this press is at 305 for 10 seconds. So I'm gonna head to my heat press, pre press my shirt, and then press this heart up above here. And I'm gonna do it for like 305 for five seconds or so, just to get it stuck good, just like we did with the Caesar Glitter, and then sub over the top with the sublimation design. So same procedure, just a different brand to see if there's a difference in brands. Here's my B-Flex glitter. So I put the glitter on and then I put my sublimation on top. I did the B-Flex glitter itself at like 305 for about eight seconds, peeled the carrier sheet off and then I added my sublimation design on top and pressed the same I did for the Caesar. So it was like 400 for 50 seconds. So you can see that the B-Flex is way muter in color. And it's definitely not even as glittery as the Caesar. So overall, I think the Caesar is best for sublimation. Now we are going to throw this shirt in the laundry, of course, so we will see how the Caesar uh, fares once we wash it a few times. But now let's talk about flocked HTV. So let's start with a product called Subly Flock. So this comes in eight and a half by 11 sheets. The flocked is on one side. So flocked means kind of like a fuzzy HGV. And then the carrier sheet, the glossy side is on the back. So what this is designed to do is to run through your sublimation printer and to print right onto the subway flock. However, I tried to do that several different ways with my Epson EcoTank printer that I converted for sublimation, and this will not feed through the printer. So we are gonna try it a different way. What I did is I cut a heart out of the subly flock and I applied it to my shirt. So let's talk a little bit about how I did that. All right, so I cut my heart out of my subly flock and this is just a scrap. And then because it's facing up, I didn't mirror my design and I peeled it back from the carrier sheet 
So I just peeled it off the carrier sheet and put it on my shirt and pressed. And I pressed for like 320 for about eight seconds and the carrier, sh and it was fine, like it was stuck. Of course it wasn't on the carrier sheet. So what I did was I took my carrier sheet and I put it back over the top before I pressed to protect the subway flock while pressing. Now, if you have an intricate design, that's where transfer tape that is for HTV comes in. So I would use this if it was an intricate design because it was just a heart, me removing it, placing it on the shirt, placing something over that, pressing it for about eight seconds at 320 worked fine. The heart is attached to my shirt. So now I'm gonna try this. This is not the way this product was intended to work, but we're gonna try adding, this is just a sublimation print on sublimation paper. And we're just gonna add that to the shirt. And we'll do the 400 at 50 seconds now that we have the sublimation. And we'll see what happens. Hopefully this will work since it is a polyester base surface, but who knows? So we're going to add this. And then I have another flocked HTV as well to try. So it is called print flock. Again, it's designed, it comes in a roll, but it's designed to be able to cut and feed through your printer. Again, I could not get it to print. So I have it in the same situation. So I have my um, ASAB paper with print flock. And then I have the print flock itself just on this carrier sheet and I'm just gonna peel it off. Again, I would use a transfer tape if the design was intricate and I'm gonna put it on my shirt up here and use the same procedure as for the um, subly flock. Now the print flock, the second version we're gonna use, it's a 295 for 12 seconds, this material here, the rolled material. So I'll probably press it like 295 for about six, seven seconds, and then make sure that it comes off fine. But again, I would put this on my shirt, and then you can ha like have this carrier sheet to cover it up. You can use protective paper. You can use this um, transfer tape here, just something to cover it up to protect it while you press. But first, I'm gonna head and do my sublimation on the subly flock. All right, here are my flock designs all pressed. So this is the subly flock. This is the print flock. Both of them look amazing, even, maybe even brighter than the regular sublimation. Now, the problem with all the methods I've done so far is that you have to place the sublimation onto something that's already cut. And as you can see on this one, I got my design off a little bit, so I did mess this one up. So that is the only problem with the ones I've done so far, but they look amazing and we're gonna see how well they hold up in the laundry. Now let's move on to some other options for sublimating on dark colors and cotton. Subly Flex actually has instructions for matte finish and gloss finish, so we're gonna try both. So I have this one cut, but I did not weed it yet. So I printed this on my sublimation printer using Cricut Design Space, and then used Print and Cut to cut around it. And for all of these, I could basically use an iron-on setting with more pressure. And then I just weed it just like iron-on. So all of the ones we've done so far are basically HTV, the flocked and the glitter. But these are basically the same thing. But you can print on them with your sublimation printer. So you do it mirrored. And then we're gonna place it down onto our shirt. So these are both the same material, but we're gonna use two different methods of application to get what they're saying is two different results. So the first method we're gonna try is the matte application method. So we're gonna pre-press the shirt to remove any moisture about five seconds. And then we're gonna place this onto that pre-pressed area. And you're gonna put 10 sheets of regular copy paper over the top. And then you're gonna press this, and it presses at 356, and the first press is 15 seconds. Now, it does require heavy pressure. So you will need a heat press for this. The rest of the ones I've done so far, I've used my heat press, but you could probably have used an easy press. For some of the ones we're gonna get into now, 
we're gonna get into some that require heavy pressure and you will need a heat press and that includes this one. So after I press for that 15 seconds, that first press with the 10 sheets of copy paper on top at high pressure, I'll come back and I'll explain the rest of the procedure. All right, so this has been pressed that first time with the 10 sheets of copy paper on top for the 15 seconds. Then I removed it from the press and I let it cool completely. So it's not even warm anymore. And then we wanna peel back this top sheet. Then once that's peeled back, we are going to cover this with silicon paper, put it in the heat press again, and press it again for 30 seconds at the 356 degrees, again with the maximum pressure. And now that we're done with that second press, we peel back and you can see that the colors on this one are gorgeous. So this is the matte finish or the instructions for the matte finish. So let's do the Subway Flex again, but with a glossy finish and kind of see the differences. Again, we're gonna pre-press the shirt for five seconds. Then we're gonna add our design. We're gonna put the 10 pieces of copy paper over the top and we are going to press for the 15 seconds once again. But this time we are going to remove it from the press for just a few seconds, put it back in the press and press again for 30 seconds without this paper on the top and then peel back the carrier sheet. So that should give us a glossy finish, whereas this one should be more matte. So let's see what happens. All right, so here's our Subway Flex all pressed and you let it cool completely after that second press and then just peel back that liner. And this is way glossier than the matte version. You probably can't see that on camera. Well, maybe you can see how glossy it is and then this one is not near as glossy. So this one is super glossy and smooth. So we will see how these compare in the laundry as well. And then you can kind of compare them to our original sublimation print as far as colors on both ways to apply the subliflex. So now let's move on to our next product. Next, we're gonna do sublimate sheets. And this is actually a fabric and you print directly on it. I had no problems printing on it. I cut it with the bonded fabric setting on my Explore Air 2, no problem there. Um, I did pull it out, so the bonded fabric setting goes over the design twice, and I pulled it out after one cut because it was cut through. Um, so what you do, you print it on your sheet, um, so it has a shiny side and a matte side, and you print it on the matte side and you do not mirror it. So it's gonna lay on our shirt just like that, but you do need to let it cure for a minimum of two hours before pressing. Mine, all of these have been curing like almost 24 hours, just to let you know. And then we're gonna lint roll, pre-press for 10 seconds, and then we're gonna put this on our shirt and press for 380 at 40 seconds. And I'll probably cover it with um, like a protective sheet just so I don't get any ink on my heat press. So let me go press this and then let's take a look at how it works. All right, so here's the sublimate after pressing and it looks pretty good. It got brighter, but you can kind of see the dark color of the shirt through the fabric. Like it, the fabric is super, super thin. Whereas on something like this print flock, I can get a true white. I really couldn't get a true white in these white areas. But with compared with the sublimation, it is a little more mute. Now, the problem with the sublimate is the instructions say to wash by hand or delicate cycle only. I am gonna wash it the same way I'm washing all of these as a fair comparison. And we're gonna see if the edges start fraying and how long this actually lasts. When you use like a regular laundry cycle, I will probably hang to dry because most of these say hang to dry, but um, I will just wash on my normal laundry cycle. So let's see how long this one lasts um, in comparison with the rest of those. So now we have a couple more to go through before we can throw this shirt in the laundry. Next up is Flexi Print. So this product comes with 
both the product itself as well as the a special transfer tape included in the package. Um, so what I did was did a print then cut on my Cricut on the flexi print. So there's a shiny side and a dull side. I printed with my sublimation printer on the front and did a print then cut, weighted around all the excess, just use like a um, iron on setting and use more pressure. And then we can apply this to our shirt. So if it was an intricate design, you could definitely use this transfer tape. Since this is just a heart, I probably will not. So I will head to my heat press and like preheat this area. And then we'll just peel back this flexi print, apply it. We'll put a protective sheet over the top and it presses for only at only 284 for 15 seconds. So it is a super quick press. You do need to, after you print, you need to wait at least 30 minutes before you cut or apply it to your shirt. And then if you use the application tape, you will need to wait for it to completely cool before you remove it. So I'm not gonna use the tape. I'm just gonna go ahead, pre-press, add this, put a protective sheet on the top, press for the 15 seconds, and then we'll come back and see how it looks. So this one is done, super bright and vibrant. I really like the feel of this one. And here it is compared to my sublimation shirt if you wanna see the difference. But I do really like the way this came out and we are ready to put it to the test. So we have one more product to test and let's take a look. All right, now let's talk Caesar Easy Subly. So what comes in the package is the Easy Subly sheets as well as the mask. So you have the Easy Subly HTV and the mask sheets that you can use to transfer your design. So this is designed to work with the Caesar inks and a sawgrass printer. So Caesar makes Easy Subly inks. I am trying to use this in my Epson EcoTank printer with Hippo Sublimation ink. So there are two ways to use this. The easiest way did not work for me. So let me explain why. So the easiest way to use this is to print directly on the Easy Subly HTV with your sublimation printer and then use your Cricut machine to cut around the design and weed away all the excess. This did not work for me because my ink will not dry on the Easy Subly sheet. So this has been sitting for over 24 hours. And I've also put it under my heat press for several minutes, not pressing down, just letting the surface heat up. And I can still pick ink up off of the paper. So this is not going to work. However, there is an alternate way to apply it. And that is, I have taken the Easy Subly HTV, I cut it into a heart and weeded away all the excess. And then just with my A sub sublimation paper, I have printed my design. I'm gonna press my Easy Subly HTV onto my shirt, then sublimate on top of that. The way we've done similarly in the past with like the glitter, the flocked, that type of thing. So what we're gonna do, um, so I've seen people do it this way, but the instructions that come with the paper are for the easier method. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna press, this HTV presses at 311 degrees for 15 seconds. So I'm gonna press it at 311 for about eight or nine seconds just to get it stuck down. So this is the adhesives on the back. So just like the other ones, I could use the mask if I had an intricate design. The mask is included in this package. I don't, so I'm just gonna peel this off. I'm gonna preheat my fabric, lay my heart down and press it, then go back and press this over the top. And for this one, I'm gonna do the 311 for like 15 over the top, um, because that is what it says to do for sublimation. And we'll just see what happens. Um, may have to press longer or at a higher temperature. So we'll see what happens on my shirt after I press my design. So I did end up pressing this at 400 for about 40 seconds because the other did not work for the sublimation. Now, however, it looks amazing. So this is the Easy Subly with the alternate method of application. And I did press it on the back of the shirt so I didn't mess up any of my other 
um, experiments. And then this is the sublimation chart. So very, very close. So let's talk about, so we can, we've seen the color comparison. Let's talk about feel. Each of these products sits on top of the shirt where sublimation embeds into your shirt fibers. These are all gonna sit on top. Now, the easy subly, I must say, is maybe my favorite. Actually, it's really thin. You can barely feel it on the shirt. It just feels really, really nice. But they are gonna be similar to an HTV in feeling. All right, so the glitter just feels like a glitter HTV. The B Flex glitter, I wasn't wild about how it came out. The Subly Flex, while I love the way it looks, the glossy, I don't like the way it feels. Like it kind of feels sticky in a way. Um, I do like the mat, the feeling of the mat a little better, but I don't like the look as well. So I'm not completely wild about the Subly Flex, but we'll see how it fares in the laundry. Um, the Flexi Print, I feel like it is very close to the Caesar Easy Subly in feeling. So it's probably right up there with, you know, like my top two so far. Um, the Sublimate, you can definitely feel it on the shirt. It's like a piece of stiff fabric on your shirt. Um, then the print flock and the subly flock. I mean, if you've ever had a flocked HTV on your shirt, that's what it's gonna feel like. Um, the subly flock is probably a little thinner. Um, we'll just see how they fare as far as in the washing machine. But that you do have that like fuzzy feeling of a flocked HTV on both of them. So the, I mean, it, it's just flocked HTV with sublimation on the top. So now that we've ran through all of our experiments, you see how to sublimate on dark colors and cotton. I am going to start running this shirt through the laundry in 48 hours. So I'm gonna wait 48 hours before washing this for the first time because some of these products say to wait that long and I don't, you know, I want to give each of them a fair chance. So 48 hours from now, I will start washing this black shirt. The sublimation shirt, I'm going to leave just like it is. I'm not gonna wash it. I have another video on sublimation on polyester and how that fades if you're interested in that. It basically doesn't, but I do wanna keep this just as it is for comparison with our shirt as we wash it. So 48 hours from now, I'll start washing this and I'll come back with periodic updates. All right, let's talk about some results after one time through the laundry. So when I pressed the B-Flex, it was super mute. And I kept thinking it had like a film over the top. It may have been some of the sublimation paper. I'm not sure, maybe I got it too hot. But after one wash, this actually got brighter than it was before. It's still not as bright as the Caesar or as bright as the sublimation, but it did get brighter. So I think there was some kind of film over the top and it might've been user error, I don't know. There is actually a reason I do a heart because this little tip here tells me if it's stuck down well. And then this dip here usually will crack first. Like a, an HTV will crack wherever there's a large dip. So the Subly Flex, both the gloss version and the matte version are starting to crack. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Just right there in the center, there's a crack. So I'll keep you up to date on those, see if that expands at all but both Subliflex, both the gloss and the matte are starting to crack. And the Sublimate, that was the one it did say to wash on delicate setting, but I just washed this inside out, regular setting, did not dry it at all. And after one time, it's already fraying on the edges. So you can see a few um, fabric fray marks. So I don't think this one's gonna last very long. And then for our flocked test, the Subli flock is doing well. The print flock, has the smallest tear in that dip in the heart. So I will keep an eye on that. Finally, just to compare the easy subway looks fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this black shirt in a few more times just to see what happens. This is after three washes and I just wanted to take a look at the subliflex, um, both the gloss and the matte because it is cracking all over. I hope you can see all those cracks within the transfer so that's the gloss version and then the matte version is here and again tons and tons of cracks
flex within the product. So the Sublo Flex is definitely out for me. The only other real update is probably the Sublimate here because it is fraying a little bit more around the edges, but we expected that I would think because it was fraying after the first wash. So the rest of them are the same as they were with my last update. So I'll just keep washing the black shirt. All right, so this is after 10 laundry cycles and you can see the Subliflex is just tearing apart. Like it, I would not recommend it at all. Um, otherwise there's not a ton to update on. The glitters are still holding strong. There's both of those. Um, the flocks, we will take a quick look at those. So the print flock, I noted that the cracking had started, you know, several cycles ago, but it is getting deeper. And the subla flock, just like this past cycle, just started a little bit of a crack right in the center. Um, the sublimate still basically looks the same like the fraying is getting a little bit more maybe but like if you wanted something that would give you a rustic frayed look with sublimation this might be the product for you um, and then the flexi print still looking good and finally the easy subly again it still looks good so i'll continue to run some laundry cycles and we'll come back and do some updates let's take a look after 20 laundry cycles so these are the glitters and both of them seem to be doing okay. The, the Caesar just started cracking right at the in the dip in the heart, like maybe the 19th or 20th cycle. Um, but as you can see, the colors are still holding pretty good. We're not even gonna look at the Subliflex anymore. The flocked, the print flock and the Subli flock are both holding their color pretty well. The Subli flock has started cracking and oddly, it's kind of getting black lines around the outside where the white is um, and in the middle a little bit. So it's kind of looking weird um, and I'm not completely wild about how it's looking. So we'll see how that turns out. And then here's that sublimate and it is kind of fading, but it is holding on really well. And I think this would be amazing for those like rustic hat patches to sublimate on those onto a hat and get that frayed kind of looking edge, but it's adhering really well and looks actually pretty good. All right, so I wanted to compare the flexi print to the easy subly versus my sublimation shirt. So the flexi print, the past couple of cycles is really starting to fade. I hope you can tell that the color is changing in comparison with the Easy Subly, which still looks great. Um, they both, I don't think, yeah, neither one of them is cracking and it's holding on really well, but I'm definitely impressed with the Easy Subly and how it's looking so far. So I am gonna wash this black shirt a few more times and see what happens. So finally, after 22 laundry cycles, I gave up. I have my sort of clear winners in this at this point, so I know which products I like and which I would not purchase. So I thought we would just run through the results of this experiment. So let's start with the worst and go up to the best. So Subliflex, I did not like at all. I'll just say that I would not purchase it. I would not use it to sublimate on dark and light color clothing. Um, the Sublimate, which is the fabric, I would only use that if you wanted more of a rustic look with that frayed edge around the edge. Um, the glitters, I liked both of them, I guess. If you're looking for a glitter look for your shirt and you want to sublimate over the top, I would recommend the Caesar glitter over the B-Flex glitter. I do think it performed better and looked better as far as the colors really popping off of that. So I would say the Caesar glitter if you wanted that glitter look. And then the same thing for the flocked. I really only think if you want that flocked feel and look, that's the only case where I would use that. Um, so I kind of had problems with both of the brands that I used. Um, the print flock held its color well. It did start to crack first. The sub -la flock really held the color, started to crack later, but it has started to get like a weird um, look to it where there's sort of like black cracks maybe or something like showing through the flocking. 
So it started getting kind of weird and I'm not exactly sure what's going on with it. So both of those, I would say they're kind of equivalent. They basically look the same right now as far as coloring. So I would say whichever one maybe is on sale. And I will link to all these below again, reminder. All right, so my top two products for sublimating on dark and cotton clothing are Flexi Print and Easy Subly. So for me, the definite winner is the Easy Subly. It definitely held its color the best and there is still zero cracking and it still adhered really well to this shirt. The Flexi Print, no cracking. It's adhered really well to the shirt, but I have noticed some fading as of the past few laundry cycles. So I would say that it fails before the easy subly. So it's just gonna depend on like how long probably you want your shirt to last. Like, are you selling these shirts? Are you making a shirt that you're only gonna wear four or five times? Like what, what's the purpose of the shirt? and how much do you want to spend on that product. But that's sort of my rundown on my least favorite to my most favorite products. And now you can decide for yourself. Take a look at the products, which are on sale, which seem to be within your budget, and which held up the best on my shirt. Like I said, the only one I really would not recommend is the Subliflex. Um, otherwise, I think any of these would work for your shirt. Um, I wasn't wild about the B-Flex glitter, the feeling or the look. Otherwise though, I think you could use any of these and be happy with the shirt you create. And it's just gonna depend on, like I said, the look you're going for and how long you want that shirt to last and what kind of durability you're looking for. Now, I do wish that, so my top two were the Flexi Print and the Easy Subly. I wish that the Easy Subly I would have been able to run through my printer and it be able to dry because that additional step of needing to put it on top and line it up is just an opportunity for error. So that's where I think the flexi print would actually shine would be with that without that step. So being able to print on it, I feel like that is where the difference is going to lie for me. Um, so it's probably going to depend for me on the project I'm working on it. So how long I need the shirt to last? Yes. And then is it a super complicated design that I might have trouble lining up? Then maybe I just go with the flexi print over the easy subly and run the risk of, you know, like it only lasting about 15 laundry cycles or so, something like that. So I hope this video helps answer the question. I don't think that I can give you just one straight answer, but hopefully this whole experiment helped you figure out which material is best for you when sublimating on dark and on cotton clothing. So now, if you have any questions, we covered a lot, drop down in the comment section, ask away. If you, this video helped you, if you loved it, I know you did, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have experimental videos like this all the time, and trust me, you don't wanna miss any of those. So thank you all so much for joining me, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.